Welcome to this video on AWA, which is the Analytical Writing Assessment. And as you must be knowing, it's an important part of both GMAT and GRE. And this video is going to focus on the basic orientation for AWA. And so even if you're giving GMAT or if you're giving GRE, this video is going to be equally helpful to you. And before we go ahead and get started, you can note down our website address that is perfect-scores.com. You can send us your valuable feedback at perfectscores89 at gmail.com. And you can also like us at facebook.com slash perfectscores. So as I said, it does not matter whether you are giving the GMAT or GRE. This is a basic orientation video and that can be watched by anyone. So let us get started with that. Now, what is the AWA? You know, it is the Analytical Writing Assessment. The score of the AWA is from 0 to 6 in 0.5 increments. That means you get scores of 4, 4.5, 5, 5.5, 6, and so on before 4 as well. But the point is that your target should always be more than 4.5. And if you follow the rules and strategies that I discuss in this video, I'm sure that keeping everything else as perfect, for example, grammar and vocabulary, you will easily be able to score 5.5. And if you follow everything that I say, especially in the argument essay, I'm definite that you will score 6 out of 6. Because all the strategies that I'm going to discuss with you are time-tested, and I have actually applied all these strategies in my own GMAT test as well. And as a result, I got the complete 8, 6 out of 6 in my AWA. So I'm sure you'll be able to benefit from that information as well. So for both GRE and GMAT, AWA is the first section that comes before any of the other math or verbal based sections. You get 30 minutes per essay. And that is 30 minutes including the thinking plus the typing time. And adding to this typing time, let me add the revision time as well. Be sure that you click on submit before the 30 minutes expire. Otherwise, there is a risk that your essay does not get submitted. And as a result, you get zero. So beware of that kind of situation. Leave at least three minutes at least three minutes for revision at the end. And how will you be able to pace all of this? That will be through a lot of practice. So as soon as you want that someone should evaluate your essay, you can always send in your essays on this email address. And remember, your essays should be typed on a notepad or a word pad, not the Microsoft Word, because the software that you will get in your exam will not be able to give you your spelling mistakes or grammar mistakes. So it's just like a blank notepad. The punctuation, the full stops, the capital letters, everything you will have to take care of yourself. The only things that will be allowed to you would be three buttons. That is to cut, to copy and to paste. So only these three things you can do. And apart from that, any other editing that you want to do, you have only two options, that is undo and redo. There is no sixth option available for you, so you will have to rely on your own skills. Coming to the GRE AWA section, there are going to be two essays. One is analyze an issue for 30 minutes, and then analyze an argument for another 30 minutes. So approximately one hour of the GRE test goes in the essay section. For GMAT, it will only be the Analyze and Argument essay. So you have a 30-minute section and after that you start with your IR and so on. But why is this section a part of the GRE and GMAT test? Isn't the GRE and GMAT an aptitude test? Then why do they need the AWA? The reason is that most of the students who give the GRE are either aiming for their masters or they're aiming for their PhDs. As a result, whatever course they take up in the future will involve a lot of writing, a lot of literature reviews, thesis, research proposals, journals and articles. 
So for that, the candidates have to have a prerequisite set of skills for writing as well. So that is why GRE's essays are so important. For GMAT, however, the main skill that is tested in GMAT AWA is how well you are able to analyze that argument. Here we are not only talking about criticism, we are talking about finding some rational problems, some wrong assumptions, some uh, detrimental flaws in the argument that make it weak. So that in the future, if you are the manager and you have to send a proposal to someone or you have to write some information and communicate it, there should not be any kind of flaws in your argument. Or if you want to dissect some other person's argument, you would be able to do that. So let's get ahead and get started with the important factors that are tested in the AWS section. First of all, the content structure, format, and language. So basically as we'll be discussing it further as well, your AWA essays are supposed to be a minimum of 350 words plus. Remember you have to type these 350 words or more than that in approximately 25 minutes because you need around 22 minutes for brainstorming and around 2 to 3 minutes for your revision as well. Alright, so remember the word limit. Structure and format refers to your cohesion and coherence both. That means you should have a proper introduction, three paragraphs in between, and then the conclusion. So a typical five paragraph essay. That would be a cohesive and coherent one. By cohesion, I actually mean that the order of ideas should be logical. So obviously, you will have an introduction first, the different points later, and finally the conclusion. This order cannot be reversed otherwise your essay is not going to be cohesive and coherent by this we also mean that your essay should be effective that means it should have the right kind of detail as well as it should leave out repetitive phases and that is why it should be concise enough as well so a mixture of details plus concision keeping in mind the time and the word limit you are expected to adhere to. So that is what results in an effective essay. The third important thing is the supporting evidence that you cite in your essay. For analyzing issue essays, you need real world examples. What kind of examples you use and whether they help to support your point or not, that will also decide how much do you score. For the argument essay, the kinds of arguments you are able to build up against the argument given to you, the supporting evidence, the faulty premises, the other flaws that you can find. So all that supporting evidence also has a big role in your AWA. And fourth, last but not the least, clarity of idea. You need to remember and be careful that the grader of the essay is going to have just about two to three minutes to read your essay. That is two to three minutes per essay and he or she will be reading so many essays on the same topic. That means that your essay needs to be very, very clear. Whatever you are saying should be very clear and examiner should not be confused as to what do you actually believe in. After that, here are a few recommendations. Word length, as I told you, has to cross 350 words. There is no maximum word limit. The only limit is on time. So you have to be careful of that. Not get too lost in writing and typing the entire essay that you miss the point that you get only 30 minutes. Second point, write in paragraphs. Like I told you, the introduction, three paragraphs and the conclusion. If you have time and if your speed is good, you can even have four paragraphs and then a conclusion. So overall, a five or a six paragraph essay will fetch you a very good score. The general format is that which you will be following once you watch the complete videos. Follow the format and the strategies that are discussed and there will be no problem in that. And then you have to have a look at grammar, your spelling, sentence formation. Now you may have a few spelling mistakes but that does not mean you do not know the spellings. It's because in our daily life we are usually 
accustomed to auto check and spell check software that checks our spellings and corrects them without us even knowing about them. So you have to take care of spellings yourself, sentence formation, everything. And you need to show a lot of variety in vocabulary and grammatical structures. Not the same kind of small sentences. You need to show a more mature outlook towards writing. And in vocabulary, I do not mean that you have to use very high level and very heavy words. But vocabulary that is apt according to that particular topic. But how is the essay actually scored? So there are going to be two graders. One will be a human grader. The other will be an e-grader. That is a software that's going to grade your essay. So these two, one software and one grader, they are going to give you a score out of six. Let us suppose the human grader gives you four and the e-grader gives you five. The end result that you will get is 4.5. And usually the human grader and e grader are completely compatible. So you will not have diverse, diverse uh, scores such as human grader giving you 2 and e grader giving you 6. So this kind of situation does not happen. Usually it is very near. So how does the scoring actually take place? Let me start with what the e grader does. Suppose you get a particular topic. Let's say your topic is X, Y, Z. Now this E grader is going to have a lot of essays that got 6 out of 6 on the same topic, that got a 5.5 .5 on the same topic, that got a 5 on the same topic, that got a 4.5 and so on. So basically for every score on that particular topic, it's going to have a large number of essays and it is going to compare your essay to all of these essays to see that your essay has maximum points common with which score essay. Suppose your essay has a lot of things common with these particular essays or these groups of essays. So the E grader is going to give you a 5.5. Similarly, if your essay has a lot of things common with the 6 out of 6 essay, it will give you a score of 6. Now what the human grader does is, looks at real world examples because obviously the e grader will not be able to judge the content it basically focuses more on your structure your formatting your grammar all those concepts of writing and human graders also have this little pressure going on in their mind that they have to score as near as possible to the e grader so that both of them are able to give you a compatible score. For example, this situation. So remember the E grader grades like this and the human grader also tries very hard to be as neutral as the E grader. All right. So this is how the scoring is done. So using the tips and strategies that we will be discussing, you will be able to come to know of the common things that are there in this essay but missing in all the other essays. As a result, if you use these common phrases, these words, these kind of arguments and structures, you will be very good in the eyes of the E grader and the human grader as well. So here is the difference between the argument essay and the issue essay. In the argument essay, what you have to do is analyze a fictional argument. That means it's not true does not belong to this world it's created by someone you do not have to use any external ideas or examples so external ideas not to be used no external examples as well what you need to do is evaluate it analyze it so it must include both flaws and suggestions take it this way a student comes to you with an essay and you are supposed to check or analyze that essay or writing sample for him. So what are the two things that you will be telling that student? Obviously, you will point out all the mistakes. Plus, you will be giving him the scope of improvement that he has, the kind of suggestions that you want to give him. So both these things are going to help you. And argument essay is part of both GMAT and GRE. So all the students, of GMAT plus GRE, you must watch the videos on how to frame the argument essay. However, let's come to the issue essay. We need to analyze an issue. 
you can either completely agree completely disagree partially agree or conditionally agree but what you have to do is use examples to prove your point now these examples are the real world examples so as you see the issue essay is pulled apart from the argument essay you have to do a lot of out of the box thinking in this one and this is there only in gre so the students who are taking the gre test can go ahead and watch videos of both argument and issue essay so this is the course plan ahead for gmat test takers watch the videos on argument gre test takers watch videos on both of them the argument as well as the issue